Well, hello. Welcome to another episode of Revamped Outdoors. Let's talk a little bit about safety, because uh, I never do that. And safety, safety's third, right? Safety, safety, safety. So it's important when we're doing these projects, we do a lot of this kind of stuff like the plastisol and epoxies and urethanes and stuff. And I never really take into account some of the ventilation issues. Mostly because I can do that out in the garage. I can open the door. I can have a lot of good through venting all the time during the summer, spring, and fall. Problem is we're in winter now. I'm in Wisconsin. It's 30 degrees out right now, and it's routinely 10 degrees or sub-zero. So out in the shop, uh, none of my stuff can stay out there during winter. It freezes. Uh, you can't paint in that weather. Obviously, it never dries. So what we're going to do today is we're going to build a fume hood downstairs in a workshop so it's climate controlled. We're not going to do that really uh, now. I'll show you things that I how I built because it's we already did it. We, we already, I mean, I already, we didn't. So the first step is to determine what uh, what you want to do. What I want to do is I want to ventilate my workshop downstairs so it's warm. And uh, to do that, I'm going to build this cabinet and I'm going to use a range hood. Range hood is just something you put above your stove. You can usually get them for pretty cheap. Uh, disclaimer here, this is not going to be a, a traditional fume hood. This is going to be just a fume extraction cabinet uh fume hoods like chemical fume hoods are pretty expensive uh way above my pay, pay grade considering i don't uh, get paid for this I'm just doing it for fun so what i'm gonna do uh in typical fashion for this channel is i built a cabinet around what i thought i was gonna buy a wind flow just from the home depot i'll show you that now this is at 164 here. You can get it for a little bit cheaper than that. I got it for like 130 at the time. That was about a month ago. This is 30 inches wide. It's got a 400 CFM uh, fan on it, which is pretty awesome. If you know anything about range hoods, usually they're in that like 200 CFM thing. You can look online for instructables on how to do uh, building fume hoods, something like this. This instructable is really amazing, actually. He took a small, like, kind of under cabinet fume or range hood, turned it into a fume hood because his wife makes this epoxy jewelry. They didn't want the fumes and they couldn't do it outside, et cetera, et cetera, just like I did. I use this as kind of like a scale model of what to do. He had a nice cabinet down here, rolling cabinet, a metal one. I didn't, so that's why we're building. Uh, one from scratch. Nothing too fancy about it. I do like the fact that it's aluminum and rolled edges, so you have a lot less uh, air movement through this. I'm not having to go in there and caulk up a lot of edges because it already is rolled aluminum. So when I was looking at it online, they had these inches already put out on a schematic. So I was like, hey, I already got this to go. I can design and build this cabinet before I even get the range hood. That's where Fusion 360 comes in. All this is just basic sketches. This is kind of how I wanted it to work. On the final design, I had a piece of plywood on the back here just to make it a little bit easier to seal up. But that's all I did with this, you know, just come through here, made these two by fours, made these uh, half inch plywood here and three quarter inch plywood on the top. Then I was thinking, well, I got all this set up in Fusion 360. I wonder if there's a way that we can make a cut list. So there actually is, in fact, a cut list for Fusion 360. And uh, I just searched Autodesk, and you can find it here. It's called CSV BOM, B-O-M, Bill of Materials, which is another name for a cut list. Uh, this is from Peter Bocker Behalter? Boker? 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 Sorry, Peter, if you ever see this. I uh, appreciate your hard work, though. Thanks, Pete. Uh, it's a really cool plugin. Works really well. Uh, not a problem at all with that. All you do is install it into Fusion 360, and then it'll end up giving you another drop down here. You create that. You say, okay, generate a cut list. Say, okay. And then it'll pump, pump out a CSV, a comma separated file, or comma separated values file. CSV is like from the beginning of time is just like something Excel can open. You could use LibreOffice if you don't like Microsoft products and you want a free version of it. But uh, it, when you open it up, here's how it comes. So Fusion 360 is looking at everything X, Y, and Z, right? So this one and this one are gonna be different values because this is long for this one and this is long for this one. They stay all the same. So we got 2.5 inch. It has it for width here, but obviously it's you know, the depth of that piece of plywood. But I know that 0.5 inches is gonna be plywood. So then I know I need 19 and a quarter by 21 inches 
for two of them. Then if I want to find this tabletop, what's my cut going to be on that? I go in here, I find 0.75. This time it's in height because it's on the z-axis is how high it is. It's 0.75 and that's for 30 and a half inches by 19 and a quarter. So then I have this cut list. I can go through this, find where my two by fours are, right? Lump those all together, figure out how long I need for two by fours, go to the store, purchase the lumber. And then what I really like about this is that this cut list is already set up. So when I get home, I just quickly cut these out, done with it. Didn't have to worry about it. Didn't have to, you know, triple check all that or try and fit parts together on the fly. This was really nice, helped out a lot. Only thing I had to change in Fusion 360 was change the units over to inches because I had inches in my schematic for the range hood. Because we're in America and uh, we like to use imperial measurements because we we don't like to do things easily. The cool part about doing it and mocking it up in Fusion 360 as well is that I could build that cabinet before the range hood even showed up. So that was really nice. I built the cabinet to kind of what I wanted for specs. I wanted to be able to stand up on it, maybe use like a bar stool to sit on it if I needed to, but I wanted it to be nice and comfortable at a high level. So I set it to about 40 inches tall. I know that is pretty tall, but I'm a taller guy and I figure I'm going to be the only one using it. So there you go. There you have it. Then what I did is I just installed the range hood onto the paneling walls that I have down in the workshop. I set it up to where I'd like it. I put it um, to where it wouldn't obstruct my view at all. That's kind of important too with this type of project. You want to stand over it and be able to see down clearly instead of having the, the hood itself actually get in the way. So you don't want to, you know, do this, you know. So you don't want to, you know, do this you know, little hunch over business. Not fun, didn't want to do that. So set that up to the height I wanted to, put that onto the wall. Then what I did is I put the cabinet around that and then glued in, uh, I used an adhesive caulk, which a silicone adhesive caulk that you would use for like tile and grouting. So it actually sticks things together pretty well. I put that caulk around the outside of the range hood and uh, it stuck together really nicely, held it with tape for about a day and then it gets nice and stuck. The cool part about that is then I didn't have to use any sort of, uh, like I didn't have to drill holes into the range hood at all. It just stayed there with the adhesive caulking. Now what we need is a reducer because when it comes out of the range hood, it's six inches. The real thing you're supposed to do with this is directly vent it to the outside. The shorter the run, the better. The problem is, is I don't want to drill, uh, you know, cut another hole in my house. So. What we have is this creepy, like, single stall shower down in my basement for some reason. Not really sure why the previous owner put it there, but we never use it. And what they did is they installed a bathroom fan over that shower. And they put the bathroom fan out to a dryer duct that's a 4-inch ductwork. So I figured that if I could reduce the range hood from 6 inches down to 4 inches and make that, like, 8, I think it's like 9-foot run over to that dryer vent that's already cut in the house, I didn't have to put another hole in my house. I don't know about you, but the less holes in my house, the happier of a person I am. I just kind of feel putting holes in your house isn't exactly the best plan of attack. I know I'm gonna lose about 30%, depending on some of the estimations you read, 30 to 40% of the CFM based on necking it down from six inches to four inches. But the beauty with that is that I overcompensated with the CFM on the range hood I chose, so I'm at 400 CFM already. So even with the size of the opening, I think we're gonna be okay necking it down to four inches. I went with a galvanized dryer vent uh, duct, and it's a sleeved galvanized vent. I'm not exactly happy with that ducting. It is nice, it is relatively affordable, and it does go together very easily. It is nice and flexible, so you can get it around different corners. I didn't really take into account the fact that there's a potential for leaking between the sleeved portions. So in the future, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move probably over to something like this. This has a thermoplastic on the outside, relatively cheap, actually pretty cheap, cheaper than the actual dryer vent itself. 
actually, if I look at the price now, but it's 25 feet uh, for $16.99 off of Amazon. So this has a thermal plastic on the outside. I know this is going to be a lot more fume. You know, it's going to contain those fumes as they move out to the outside much better than the sleeved together galvanized piping. So, or ductwork, excuse me. So that's on the list. I think that's going to happen in the near future, but until then, I'm just running the basic galvanized sleeve ductwork and it's working pretty well now i've tested it a few times so then we have six inches coming out of the range hood and all i did was just used one of these six inch to four inch reducers and you can obviously tell this is an airtight so what i did is i used some good strong nice duct tape some t-rex tape uh, I put that around there, made sure I sealed this up really, really well. And then I just used uh, caulking around that outside of the range hood to make sure this was a nice seal to the 4-inch. I ran the 4-inch through the wall. All I did was used a 5-inch hole saw and cut through the paneling wall that I had down there. I'm really lucky that it was an interior wall uninsulated with paneling. So real quick just to drill through that quick to move it through what you don't want to do is have more than three 90 degrees bends in your ductwork. i'm running at two right now to get it to the outside so i think i'm within that ballpark what i did for testing is i just put i just bought some cheap incense i put five incense sticks in there at once let that really build up and then i turned it on i also watched it as it was you know as it was burning and generating fumes inside i watched that on all three of the different speeds they mostly work, uh, all three mostly work. I don't think it's powerful enough on one to completely remove as many fumes as I would like. So as I'm actively working in that area, I'm gonna have it on two or three just to make sure that we're moving that air out. It's bringing in the new air from behind me and I'm not in any danger of breathing in any of those fumes. So for now, it seems to be working well. It took all that smoke and evacuated it really quick. And then I just wanted to reiterate that this isn't a, uh, you know, this isn't a true chemical fume hood, right? I'm not going to be doing anything really dangerous in here. I'm not going to be doing any flammable materials in here for sure because that fan and all that wiring and everything is exposed to those fumes. So you want to be sure that you can't have a fire, you know, in that area. That's also a reason why I didn't go with the four inch vinyl ductwork because I wanted to make sure that the ducting was there could withstand something if something did happen so that's why that thermal plastic one might be in the works in the future but i am making a lot of uh, hard baits now this is another big reason for this so i can do soft plastics in the basement now and also do epoxy hard baits i really uh, am going to start pushing for doing some big hard bait stuff and some integration stuff so soft plastics with a hard bait body as well so if that's something you're into please uh consider subscribing love to have you aboard uh, you can also check out some of my social media if i'm ever slow to post on youtube uh you can check me out on these or send me emails as well uh i always respond as quick as i can on those if you have any comments about this specific build, please put it down in the comments below. You're not only helping me out, you might help somebody else out that's watching the video. So that's always good. I hope this was educational for you in some way, shape, or form. I, I'm not sure how it would be, but you never know. Maybe you're looking to do something similar. If you are, uh, this build was cheaper than I had thought. Uh, it's still expensive just to buy all those materials, but you can get away with this thing for like under... 300 bucks which is pretty good uh to keep your hobby going throughout the winter so stay tuned for more uh, actual 3d printing building lures and such at some point i promise it'll be quicker than a month from the next one till the next one keep your amps up and your filament dry